What's up, everybody? It's Scotty here with Flat Track Flashback, and uh, I missed you guys. It's been a while, uh, probably close to a month now since we've gotten to post a video. Um, our latest with uh, James Arnaz, that interview with a really uh, top upcoming amateur from California. If you haven't had a chance to check that out, please do so. But uh, yeah, lots been going on in life with um, broadcasting stuff on my end. And uh, as you, some of y'all know, I work uh, two jobs in addition to this. So that takes up a lot of time and I uh, also got to uh, experience EDC Las Vegas uh, with some really good friends. First time I've gotten to experience that music festival. And that was a super cool experience and uh, just really amazing to be around so many people from all over the world, uh, from different backgrounds, cultures, belief systems, um, really all come together and unite for just a love for music. And um, what a special experience that was. Uh, it's, it's really, really euphoric to be able to to get that that atmosphere. There's so many things trying to divide us in the world today and just uh just being a, me amongst um so many people all with the love for the same thing it's it's a really special special event um a lot of people uh very crowded but still an amazing time and i'll definitely be back uh be back next year for for that music festival but you guys didn't tune in to hear me talk about music festivals uh we're on this channel because of our uh, unified love for flat track racing and a lot has gone down since i've last spoken to you guys now uh with the california rounds there's been great coverage of those of those uh, you know recap through off the groove and through Tank Slap and podcasts and you know every, they're hitting on a lot of the big newsworthy items. Um, I'm not going to dive too much into actually I'm not really going to dive into those California rounds hardly at all. Um, hoping to do a sort of Middletown preview next week. Might touch base on some of that uh, briefly, but uh, all in all, really enjoyed those those rounds at California. Good to see support from uh, the fans out there. Uh, cool to have those two short tracks under our belt and get to see some great racing out there. Uh, it's a it's a haul for these teams. It's a big expense, but it's a market I think we really need uh, in the sport. Um, unfortunate with the weather circumstances that did keep people out there. It was very expensive, but all in all, California such a has has been a hotbed for great talent in this sport, and there's so many good riders still uh, budding out there. So hopefully, we can continue to to make that a stop on the schedule. Um, it seems like maybe spring is a little bit better. I know the summer months have been really hot out there. Um, and also, you know, trying to find those tracks to work around a lot of the sprint car scheduling that goes on. But Ventura was next level. Uh, Chico was a cool addition, um, aside from the Spider-Verse glitches that we had on that broadcast. Great racing out there. And uh, yeah, we've seen championship battles tighten up. And um, we'll dive more into that uh, during our real time preview next week. First of all, uh, one of the riders who didn't get to race Chico in a singles class, but is the former champion in that, is going to be filling in. You know, we did see at Ventura that a very scary crash involving Johnny Lewis and Morgan Mishler and Ben Lau. It's going to knock Johnny Lewis off of that Royal Infield for a little while. But in his absence, Dalton Gautier is stepping up and taking over that ride. And he'll be hopping on the Royal Infield at Middletown, New York, the next round for American Flat Track, and getting back in the Twins class. And Dalton's been competitive on Twins before. Um... It'll be interesting to see him take on this new brand. Uh, as we saw last year, they did a two-rider team with Johnny Lewis and Ryan Wells, and, and Wells, he seemed to, to struggle a little bit with that machine. And uh, it'll be interesting to see Dalton step into that role and and see how he can acclimate to that Royal Infield. Now, Johnny at Middletown last year was able to win the Mission Challenge and, and looked really strong earlier in the day and not the main event that he was hoping for out of that machine. Dalton was uh, seventh in the singles class at Middletown last year. Uh, this being Dalton's first race on that Royal Infield. Probably temper expectations a little bit, but you can't doubt Dalton, Dalton's talent. And uh, it'll be uh, pretty exciting to follow that storyline and see what they're able to accomplish with that machine. Uh, hopefully this is you know something that Dalton can continue to compete on uh, throughout the year. You know, Is he going to keep running the single, or is this going to be just the uh, focus on the twin? Um, we'll look forward to seeing how that goes. But excited to see Dalton step up into a Super Twins class that, as we saw, means... Needs more riders. Uh, only 16 in Chico, and ha over half of them got lapped. So, uh, obviously, we need we need the talent to uh, to be able to step up and to grow that class. And um, it'll be cool to have Dalton back in there mixing it up with uh, the Super Twins again. His last Super Twins sort of stint was on that XG, and uh, and I know he wants more out of out of that than what they were able to accomplish with that machine in his one year of Super Twins competition. He looked pretty good when he stepped back down to the production twins class before uh having an injury and has been in the singles the past couple of years and so moving back up to super twins on the royal infield we'll get to follow that storyline and wish Dalton all the best with this endeavor 
as they uh, they get rolling through the summer. Now we uh, we know there's the Sturgis TT. Uh, after much debate and back and forth with, I guess, city votes and track layouts and whatnot, we have the Sturgis TT, and uh, I'm just going to be blunt with you guys. Uh, I love this sport. I hate this idea. Um, I don't see flat track. I don't see a, a street race sort of concept. I don't see that being the proper showcase for what American flat track is. The Daytona TT, the Atlanta TT, and those contained speedways and, and brought it inside the NASCAR tracks, uh, that was a neat idea. Um, the Daytona one I preferred over the Atlanta round, although we did get to see Travis Pastrana in the Atlanta round, so that was rad. Uh, but I just don't love this idea, and I don't think it's the best showcase, and I'm not on board with the Adventure Tracker idea. Um, maybe I'm closed-minded and, and not, like, thinking outside the box. Um, I appreciate AFT trying new things, but a Formula One can get away with street racing. AFT cannot, and we're just racing around the block. I just don't think this is going to really showcase the 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 best of the sport. And there's been all these rumors all year about whether it's going to be a points race or not. I would assume it might as well be. This is the race that was broadcasted for Fox, the the national Fox network. Um, I just wish we had a better track personally to showcase what American Flat Track is on those bigger networks. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, I've been wrong plenty of times in the past. After all, I'm just an ignorant fan. Um so if I'm wrong, I will own up to it. And uh, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, we got plenty of time to wait for it to happen. But it's it's one of those races that I'm just kind of, you know, it's going to happen. It's it's going down. It's going down in the streets of Sturgis. And uh, we'll see how that goes. I, I do miss the Buffalo chip. I thought the Buffalo chip was a super cool round for the series. I'm not even the biggest TT fan. But that was a cool environment, and AFT absolutely does need to be part of Sturgis Bike Week. So if they can, if this works, fantastic. Um, I do think the sport needs to be involved in Sturgis Bike Week. Um, you keep the Black Hills around, and if we can get something else going, that's great. Uh, it is, I'm sure, difficult to get those events sort of solidified. They're in sort of the center of that bike rally uh, to make it easier for fans so they don't have to travel out to the racetrack. Speaking of bike rallies, we have a finale. The uh, Lake Ozark Speedway will be hosting American Flat Track's season finale this year, third of a mile uh, clay oval out there in Eldon, Missouri, and partnering with the Ozark Bike Rally out there, which brings over 100,000 people to that area uh, in the fall and gives them a, gives them something else to sort of look forward to and to, to bring into that rally. And Lake Ozark Speedway has put on some really good racing. I've gotten to see some broadcasts there through covering sprint car stuff over the past few years, and I'm excited to see a new facility on the schedule uh it's going to be a little bit of a wild card obviously with nobody really having having laps there but your guys like i think brandon robinson jared Mees are going to really shine there with it being a shorter sort of clay car track um obviously dallas daniels is consistent everywhere we go briars won on these these types of tracks before um so it'll be cool to to bring the sport to a to a new facility and a new fan base hopefully they can get a lot of those rally goers out to the racetrack and have a really fun fun night and uh enthusiastic fan base there to to celebrate the the uh, culmination of this season you know this points battle can can stay tight and come down to the end it's going to be wide open and i think we are going to be exposed to some really good racing at that track um obviously i'm a little biased living right up the street from the dirt track in charlotte um was hoping maybe that could be the location but uh lake ozark's going to put on a great show and uh and charlotte you know it it's uh it's been it's been tricky for the sport. We have we've had some some great racing. We've had per, my personal best moment ever in being a fan of this sport. But we've also had the lowest point um, that I've ever witnessed firsthand being being a fan of this sport. And that track has had issues with weather in the fall. And even though we've seen some great racing, we've seen some really uh, really unfortunate occurrences happen at that raceway. So um, yeah, uh, all support for uh, everybody involved with getting uh, Lake Ozark on the schedule. And I'm excited to see what. Uh, happens in those those final those final laps of the season down there in uh, in Eldon, Missouri in September. This past weekend, we got to see a lot of big time racing. Uh, of course, the Dairy Lane Classic is such an iconic event. Um, Bert Sumner and his team do a phenomenal job with that race and get some of the best riders every single year to show up and mix it up on a great racetrack. 
uh, as we looked at some of the results uh, following along with Left Out, which thank you to Scotty for for getting that going and and bringing that back for the weekend. It was fun to check in on their Instagram stories, follow along with all the happenings of that race. I so wish that we had more of that in flat track at some of these bigger outlaw events. You know, Corey Texter does a wonderful job of, of showcasing what's going on at his events on social media for um, for those who aren't in attendance, even before he was doing the live streaming at Winter Throwdown. You always knew uh, what was happening at those events and got updates. I know Sammy Saavedra uh, helped out a lot with that in Hagerstown last year as well. So I, I wish we we could get more of that at these big time events, even if it's just lineup sheets or like a couple of sound bites from people in the pits and, and results, uh, just so we can really you know tune in and see what's going on at these events. You know, a lot of times you have to wait for days for results, or you just have to hope that somebody can give them to. Scotty and you can hear about it on off the group um, I wish we could see more coverage of this throughout the weekends from facilities and riders um, promoting the events and what they're doing um, throughout the night but with that being said when you're a competitor you're kind of locked in and you're you're there to do a job and your focus is on the racing and not um, maybe like hopping on your phone and, and checking in with fans during during a race night uh, you got a job to do and uh, flat track racing is dangerous enough and every little bit of lost focus um could be detrimental so i understand sort of both sides to that coin but nonetheless back to dairy land and again thanks to scotty with left out uh we got to see bronson bauman who's had a really solid last month it was good to see him get sort of the ship righted out there in california with the twins program and pick up a couple of top tens um best result of the season so far when he was uh, out in ventura and then bronson able to parlay some of that into a dash for cash victory at dairy land back on the single and uh later in the night another rider who's had a decent start to to the year and is always a threat on these outlaw events, uh, Trevor Bruner. Trevor Bruner picks up the win at the Dairy Lane Classic over Chase Sadoff. Last year's winner, Trent Lowe. Bronson ends up coming home fourth in the main event. Davis Fisher rounding out the top five. We also saw Jeremy DeRoyter take home the win in the Hooligans class. And Sam Drain in the house picking up the win in the 250 class over Jack Brooks. And those two are going to be fun to watch over the, the next few years as they progress from the 250s into the 450s with this sport. I also want to give a huge shout out to McLean Drucker, who uh, comes a lot of racing on his YouTube channel. follows He follows along his whole night everywhere he goes. Um, it's really cool to check in with their with their program and and see how his results are coming along and, and get really footage from events that you wouldn't otherwise see. And McLean brought home a third place finish in the 450 Amateur Class at Dairyland uh, behind Nick Johnson and Luke Sharp, who was the winner of the 450 Amateur Class. Uh, DJ Slosser picks up a win in the Vintage Class, and Steve Wasser in the Breakless. Uh, Amen. So, Dairy Lane Classic is on my bucket list of races to, to attend at some point in my life. I really want to check that out. And partnering with uh, Road America with the Moto America event up there is such a cool, cool thing to have. Battle at the border in Welland, Ontario, Canada. Uh, second year Doug Lawrence has put that on, brings the uh, U.S. versus Canada feel. And Trent Lowe and Justin Jones were at the Dairy Lane Classic the night before, made the trek up to Welland and made it worthwhile. Justin Jones got the dash for cash win, and Trent Lowe swept the expert main events on the night. So uh, I guess USA gets the win in that battle this year. Exciting to uh, see those guys be able to attend both events throughout the weekend, get a full weekend of racing and on the season. I know Justin Jones contesting the Flat Track Canada Series, and props to them because they do a great job on their social channels of keeping us sort of in the loop on everything that's going on there. They provide really good coverage. I'm really impressed with the Flat Track Canada team and love following along with their series. Um, if you don't get a, if you get a chance, please check them out. Um, Facebook, Instagram. Um, I'm an IG guy. I don't even have a Facebook page, uh, which I know blows a lot of people's minds since I do this show and Facebook, such a huge element of, uh, of this sport, but, uh, Facebook just ain't for me. And that's probably detrimental to my brand, but I mean, screw it, whatever. I like my IG and I like my YouTube channel. So we're happy with just that up at square deals raceway. You've got the Lee Thomas cup event that happened over there. A great field of riders showed up for that event. Um, that main event was stacked all the way through. Uh, Square Deals is a track I've never gotten to experience either, but seeing videos from there, that place looks awesome. And uh, Don Gautier, Jared Vanderkoy in the house. Also, Evan Renshaw, the leading AFT singles rookie, was in the house. And uh, Craig Estelle, the uh, the local favorite there, dude is still ripping around there. Uh, Craig Estelle, one of the uh, one of the flat track uh, notable names from the 90s and a uh, pretty good speedway rider. I got to see him at uh, Red Springs, North Carolina for a speedway event. And dude just rips. And every time that they're at a square deal, he's he's one of the one of the ringers there, the local guys that can that can mix it up with some of these young bucks and kind of keep them in their place. But uh, Don Gautier winning the Dash for Cash in the 450 expert race, but Jared Vanderkoy got the best of him in the Lee Thomas Cup. 
and brought home that victory up there at Square Deal on the weekend. One event that was supposed to take place over the weekend but was postponed was the second annual Nikki and Earl Hayden Memorial Race. That is an RPM Promotions event that was supposed to take place on June 1st, but has been moved to June 8th. So that'll be coming up this weekend. It'll be a Windy Hollow Speedway, a $10,000 Pro Outlaw purse for that event. Uh, and the second annual running of that. And it's cool to have it on the, the same weekend as June 9th, Nikki Hayden Day's cool event they have going on there in Owensboro, Kentucky, to honor one of the greatest of, of all time in, in motorsports, our, our last American to win a MotoGP World Championship, but one of the just most amazing human beings on the planet. Uh, Nikki is a is a true idol of mine and uh, somebody I'm so thankful that I got to meet um, when I was, you know, yay big, uh, running around the VIR pits at an AMA Superbike race. Uh, and Nikki, a flat track winner, um, such an emotional video of him winning Hagerstown um, there in 1999 and, and rocking those TCR colors. Uh, you know, Nikki just such a such an inspiration, and, and we miss him. We miss him dearly. So to have he and Father Earl honored um, by the RPM Promotions Gang at Wendy Hollis Speedway will be uh, really awesome. So if you're in the Owensboro, Kentucky area uh, and looking for a, a big race to go to, check that out. Get a few more laps in before the uh, AFT season resumes in New York. Now, another track that's been in action this weekend, June 8th, is the return of a place that is very near and dear to my heart, and that's Mid-Carolina Speedway in Nisa, South Carolina. And Mid-Carolina Speedway, I started going there in 2004. They'd already run a few races in years prior, and what an amazing track that was. Such a fast quarter mile. Uh, Chris Carr, one of the greatest of all time in our sport, had high praise for that facility. He and guys like Terry Pooley and Jake Johnson, just to name a few, would go there, do some testing before Daytona. Um, as they as they were coming down for the short track, and uh, this place, you know, on a, on a Saturday night, just outside of Columbia, South Carolina, not a too far drive for me. I got to see the likes of Chase Sconyers, Garth Brow, Robert Lewis, Newt Irvin, Greg Tyser, um, mix it up and have super competitive uh, racing on a great track, and you get to see some of the some of the the local local names really really shine down there. Maybe not uh, your Grand National Champions early on. But as this event would grow, the Matt Smoke Memorial brought in a big-time purse in 2005, and Garth Brow would win the inaugural one. But as that event continued throughout the years, riders like Jared Meese, Kenny Coolbeth, Jake Johnson, Chris Carr, J.R. Schnabel, Henry Wiles, Corey and Shana Texter would come down there, Rob Pearson, Sammy Halbert, just to name a handful of riders that would mix it up with the local pros and go after big purses there and some amazing racing at that track. Seeing those riders get around there was something else. And then we also got to see some some Southeast uh, amateurs sort of make the name for themselves. Guys like Tyler Treadaway, Zach Olive, Justin Davis, Blake Lomas, who is still involved with the Southeast Series today. Uh, the rider count started to dwindle in that facility, uh, ended up going away uh, in the 2010s. But thanks to Wade Lomas, Blake Lomas, um, Lee Blackman, and Matthew Blackman, who have been really involved in resurging this facility. And, and I talked to Lee and Matt at the uh, Southeast Flat Track opener in, in uh, Masters Motorplex earlier this year. And uh, it's been so cool to follow the progression and how much hard work they've put into revamping that facility and getting it back in shape. Uh, they have had open practices on Sundays to get feedback from riders and get that track dialed in. I mean, they've been hard at work getting, this, getting the surface back in shape. I mean, it just sat dormant for quite a while and they had to start from scratch effectively, uh, but they've worked relentlessly on getting that facility ready to rock and uh on june 8th this coming saturday if you're in the southeast and and want to check out a a resurgence of a facility that has put on some incredible racing through the years mid carolina speedway uh, off of henry road in nisa south carolina uh the southeast flash Rack series is gonna it's gonna be part of their their championship series um ama racing involved with it so definitely support mid carolina speedway if you can it honestly breaks my heart that uh, i'm not able to make it down there broadcast commitments throughout the rest of the summer um but if we end up getting rained out i'm going to be hauling it uh down to south carolina to try to catch some some of the racing that goes on down there i hope that i can get back to mid carolina speedway sooner than later but please please uh support these events that are going on over the weekend and uh and just keep keep these uh keep these promoters wanting to continue to put these races on you know it, it's a uh, it's a lot of money that goes into this and i can't imagine what lee and matt have have spent not just in time but in in monetary amount to get that thing up and running. So, thank you guys so much for for bringing back Mid Carolina Speedway, and I wish you all the best and look forward to see how that event goes down. Well, that's gonna do it for us this week. Uh, we look forward to uh, trying to keep these things going. Uh, if I disappear again, I do apologize. Um, we're gonna try to stay after it, and uh, we'll talk about 
uh, what's to come. We'll recap some of the events uh, that are that are happening over the weekend and get ready to look forward to Middletown, New York, as the series uh, starts four weeks in a row of flat track racing uh, beginning on June 15th uh, in Middletown, New York. And then we've got Bridgeport, Lima, and DuCoin to cap off this stretch. Um, that's coming up. We'll talk about that next week, sort of rehash where the series is right now and uh, look ahead. So thank you guys again for supporting this channel. Please make sure you're supporting the other uh, flat track podcasts and the people who are talking about the sport. Uh, Tank Slap and Podcast, Off the Groove with Scotty Dubler, The Pipe Dreams Pod with James Spoli and Corey Alexander, Sidetrack with Sammy Howard, and check out Sammy's YouTube channel. His recaps from Ventura and Silver Dollar and everything that he's doing on that channel is so fun to see. Um, I know he's considering diving into the podcast world as well, but Sammy does an amazing job with his YouTube videos. We mentioned earlier, McLean Drucker, if you want to see uh, what's going on in some of these local district races and follow McLean's progression through the amateur ranks, it's cool to see him uh, sharing so much of his racing. Also, uh, Frank Fabracious, I hope I didn't get your name wrong. Uh, Frank films a lot of races up in Pennsylvania in the District 6 area. Um, stumbled across his channel, and he posts a lot of stuff from that area. Uh, it's been cool to follow along with some of those videos and see what's going on out there in the Pennsylvania, Maryland region. I'll be looking and hoping that he'll be able to make it to some of those Timodium outdoors uh, and follow along with that. So, yeah, please support all those that are supporting Flat Track and get out to some racing uh, where you can. And we look forward to seeing how the rest of the season prog progresses and what everybody's got in store as we get uh, things revamped back up. Definitely awesome to see so many pros at different events throughout this past weekend and Getting the starts, staying sharp, and uh, looking to challenge for, for more wins and uh, maybe spice up those championships as we carry through the season. Thank you all again, and have a great one.